it's Good Friday, it's Claudia Manchanda here, day after chemo doing pom videos, which is quite amazing. This plant that I'm going to talk about now is a harbinger of spring. It's called Pyrewort or Lesser Celandine, not to be confused with Greater Celandine, which is in the poppy family. Um, this one is in the buttercup family, as you can see. So the botanical name of this plant is Vicaria verna and um, it's in the Ranunculus family which is a buttercup family and Ranunculus means frog and its other name is um, Lesser Celandine. Um, as I said before, don't confuse it with Greater Celandine. When I was looking up this plant I saw that some people had written about it and actually confused the two species which are quite different. Um, like all buttercups, it contains these chemicals called reliculins that are sort of quite toxic. And, but when they're dried or cooked, they're actually enzymatically broken down into glucose in something called protein amonine. And it's the amonines that are, um, can be quite efficacious in medicine. Um, a funny sort of, well, an interesting fact is years ago, I think in the Middle Ages, when people begged and they wanted sympathy for having um, leprosy, they actually put this, they broke the leaves of this plant on their skin to mimic the wounds of leprosy and, and other kind of, and scurvies and things like that when they were begging. Um, yeah, so this plant can cause... Um, sort of skin blistering and um, irritation um, which is one of its signatures of being a, a herb of Mars um, so it's quite reactive I like to recommend making it into dried preparations but herbalists like Thomas Bartram used to recommend using the whole plant um, the one thing I would say about using the plant raw is that um, it has got hepatotoxic chemicals in it and that do get broken down from drying and cooking. So um, the wonderful radical herbalist Nicholas Culpepper said it's good for hemorrhoids to ease their pain, the swelling, to stop their bleeding. Um, the leaves bruised and boiled in hog's lard until they become crisp and then strained as an excellent cooling ointment. Um, chemicals in this plant um, contain proteolytic enzymes that break down the skin. They contain saponins. Um, studies on this plant are, are very interesting on the internal use for things like ulcerative colitis, where extracts improve the intestinal barrier. Um, the M and Anenamine that's been shown to be very efficacious for inflammatory bowel disease is also present in um, in clematis, in hairy clematis. Um, the um, anenamine is also anti-tumor, antibacterial, sedative, and analgesic. The plant grows from March to April and it exists in um, different, um, different kind of ploides. Ploides is the uh, amount of chromosomes that are in the cell. So humans are diploid because we get one set of chromosomes from our, from our parents, each one of our parents. So um, these plants exist as diploid, which is um, with two chromosomal donors or as triploid, which is three chromosomal donors, or as tetraploid, which um, is with four donors. And the tetraploid varieties grow in the shade, so this would tell me that this is a probably diploid variety. And the diploid variety breeds by sexual reproduction, whereas the tetraploid breed by vegetative reproduction and that means that the, the stolons or um, the rhizomes break off to make new plants and if I don't know if we can see any rhizomes can we see any but we try and get in there but the rhizomes actually look like like piles and that's called um, their signature
Um, what I'll try and do later is dig one up and then you can actually see um, the root stock. Bye!